So this is Optimizing Your Tendency website for SEO. My name is Caitlin Kalusia. I'm the marketing manager of Shipple and Tendency. There's my picture. I always feel like on webinars, you can't, there's not as much personal connection. So there's, there's a picture of me so you can kind of see who you're talking to. I've been with uh, the company for almost five years now. I've worked as a project manager. I've run the uh, SEO team, and now I do our internal marketing. So hopefully I'll be able to give you sort of a well-rounded approach to the tendency, uh, sort of the SEO things that you really need to know in tendency. So here we go. Oh, another thing, if at some point I say now I clicked on you know, I'm clicking over here and there's a lag or something and you don't see it or if you there's an audio glitch or something, type that in the chat box as well and I'll and that will sort of let me know that you're if there's any kind of technical issues. So this is optimizing your tendency site for SEO. If you're not following us on Twitter, check us out at tendency. Well we tweet when we have upcoming events and trainings and new help files and blog posts and things like that. So make sure you're following us there. Um, again, my name is Caitlin Kalusia. I This is a picture of me, I think the last or maybe two times ago webinar I did. So that's pretty much what I look like right now. So I, uh, again, sort of trying to add a personal touch so you get get an idea of, of um, what's, what's happening on my end. Um, I mentioned I now run our marketing team. I previously ran our search engine marketing team. So hopefully I can give you some, some insight into that today. So today we're gonna cover, and really this class is not, we probably won't take the full hour um, there, we just really want to go over what SEO tools are available in Tendency, what are the kind of automatic, there's some automatic baked in SEO tools, what do those look like, and then how do you customize your optimization if you, if you want to. And then we'll go through just some tips and tools. So let's start with the automatic SEO in Tendency. A lot of times with the Tendency software, we'll say things like the S SEO is baked in. And I like to look at pie when I think about baking. So, um, and what we mean by that is that there are features of tendency that automatically create things like meta tags and meta descriptions and meta keywords. And um, the tendency has some nice features that if you never touch the SEO, it does some of that work for you. But then as we'll get into later, if you want to overwrite those things and sort of customize it yourself, you have the ability. So we try to make it where it's kind of the best of both worlds, where Tendency does some of the heavy lifting for you. But if you if you want to go in yourself and update your SEO, you can do that. So on the front end, these are things that Tendency does automatically. It creates a meta description and title tag automatically based on the content that's actually within a page. So, and I'll show you a, a demo of this, but so if you create a page with a title, Tendency is smart enough to say, oh, this is the title tag of that page and you know, create that automatically. It also creates alt tags, which is uh, tags that tell the search engines offer an image. The uh, search engines can't tell what's within that image. And so it creates an alt tag based on the image's file name. So sometimes that can be a really good thing, or sometimes the file name may be image 24386, which is not really any more helpful than the image itself. So I'll show you what that looks like and how to change that. And then also Tendency has what we call primary keywords, which are essentially in your global site settings, you can set what are your keywords that you want to be the primary keywords that your site is about. And then Tendency will use those keywords and throughout the site, it will pull in those keywords to add a little more keyword density to your content so that instead of just articles, it will say, you know, whatever your primary keywords are and then articles. And that happens on the front end primarily. So I'll, let me show you what that looks like. So um, description and keywords created based on content. That was the first thing we talked about. When you add a CMS page, the title of your CMS page by default becomes the meta title in Tendency. So this is an example, and this is a home page, but just to show you kind of what that looks like. So the title of my page in Tendency becomes up here on the top, the meta title. So Tendency opens or CMS for nonprofit websites. And then it's got, um, so these actually first two pipes are what we made the title of the page. And then at the end here, that's the name of your site. So Tendency will pull in automatically the name of the page and then the name of your site. 
And then you can see, so, you know, what does that affect? What does that look like on the front end? Well, on the front end, it means that when you're in a browser like Firefox, up here in the gray bar, you'll see that title is displayed. And then also, if you're searching in the search engine, the title of the page will show up there as well. And then uh, the description is the same way. You can see here meta name description. It's going to, Tendency will automatically create a description and it's based on the first few sentences of your page. It's just going to straight pull in content and then it's going to add those, uh, those primary keywords on the end. So by default, it's going to be, you know, whatever the first couple of sentences of your page are. And I'll show you how to overwrite that. So a, a good portion of the time, that's probably an OK description. But you probably if, if you are able to customize that description, it's probably you're probably going to be able to make it a little better um, by customizing it. And the description shows up in, again, this little meta tag in the back end. But on the front end, it shows up in the search results. So Tendency is open source content management software. Tendency is open source content management software down here in the search results. That's where that meta description shows up. A little caveat on the meta description is that if someone is searching for a keyword that is within the page, sometimes Google will ignore your description and show them the part of the text that actually contains that specific keyword and kind of highlight where that keyword is, even if it's in the middle of the page. So sometimes your description doesn't always show, but generally your description is going to show and pretty much all the time your title is going to show in search results. So let me show you, I'm going to click over to uh, our demo site and show you what that actually looks like. So um, this is our demo site, demo.tendency.com. It has a um, sort of generic username and password. If you ever want to play with any of the features of Tendency, you can do that. You go to demo.tendency.com, use this username and password up here in the orange. This site, actually, the database gets wiped clean every couple of days, so don't worry about breaking anything. Or you know, you can test things here, and um, and and you don't have to worry about you know, it's just a demo site. So let's go to the about page. So this page has got, you know, some kind of lorem ipsum text on here. You'll see that the title is about us. And in the title tag up here, it says about us and then a little pipe, then the, the geography of the site and the name of the site. So that's what your titles are going to look like by default. So the, the name of the page, piping, or the pipe, and then your geography, pipe, name of the site. And the description is going to look really similar. I'm going to go view page source right here. So here's my description. So about us, that's the name of the page. This is all the tendency, you know, automatic uh, default descriptions, so the name of the page. And then here's the first couple of sentences down here. So use this page to add a description, da, 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 da. And then it does about two sentences, ellipses, and then here's the name of the site and the geography again. So that's sort of what the, what the default description is going to look like. It also will create a default keyword tag. So what it's doing is it's adding the name of the site and the geography again, and the name of the page. And then it is sort of smart enough to figure out what are the most used keywords in your content. So it's, you know, it's, these are obviously lorem ipsum fake Latin words, but it's saying like, these are the words that are being used the most. Um, the description, I mean, sorry, the keyword tag is one of the of these three, it's the least important. Um, several search engines ig completely ignore it. I think Google completely ignores it at this point. But the way we think about it is it doesn't hurt to fill it out. It doesn't hurt to have it there. It doesn't hurt. You know, there are a few search engines that take this into account. So um, we just sort of l let it be. But it's definitely less important than the description and the title tag. So I'm going to flip back over and we'll look at the second kind of automatic tendency SEO um, a thing that it does. And that is when you add an image, it automatically adds the file name as the alternate text or the title tag, which so on the back end, it codes this as, you know, it says, here's the image, it's just a file name. And then here's the alt text, which tells the search engines what it is. So if your file name is why hyphen do hyphen people need dog walkers, that's sort of readable. And the search engines can kind of tell what that image is about. If again, if your image title is something really generic, then maybe that's not super helpful. But as we get into it a little bit later, I'll show you how to actually update this um, yourself. The third thing is primary keywords. And uh, so for shipple.com, our primary keywords are set to web design. So when you go to our article search, it says web design article search. And when you go to our news, it says web design news. And then those feed in in some other places uh, in the site. So to change your primary keywords, 
I'm going to flip over. I'm going to go back to my demo site. Um, so you're going to go to Quick Links and then Site Settings. And your site settings are in alphabetical order. So scroll down to P. And here are your primary keywords. So actually, when we were looking at the description, I flipped back over to my About Us description. Let's see, where is it? So this right here at the end of the description, this is actually the name of the site and the primary keywords. I, I can't rem I think the primary keywords are first and then the name of the site, but that's why it says it twice because we have the same thing set as the site name versus the primary keywords. You probably don't want to do that. Um, you want your site name to be the name of your organization and your primary keywords to be something different. Uh, but for us, because it's just a demo site, that's what we have it set as. So. Um, to set your primary keywords, again, go to Quick Links, Site Settings, scroll down to Primary Keywords. I would recommend keeping this to only two or three words. My sort of test for it is if I go to the news page. So here it is, Ten Tendency Demo Site News Search. I want that to make sense. I don't want this to be some big, long, 15-word, wordy title. So you want to try to keep it to two, three, maybe four um, four words, but it's going to show up here on the news. It's going to show up here on the articles. Oops, I hit caps lock instead of A. Here it is again on articles, and it's going to show up again in the, that, that default description tag. So um, that's, what, that's how you update your primary keywords. Next is uh, just a tip while we're talking about global site settings. I mentioned that Tendency is going to pull in the uh, the site name and the geographical location in those description tags. So these are the site settings that affect SEO. So go look at your site settings, particularly these site settings. I've kind of put them in order of importance, but they're listed in alphabetical order. Um, so make sure that you just sort of keep an eye on these and double check that your site name, your geography is up to date. For geography, uh, typically we'll do city, state, so Houston, Texas, USA. If you're an international brand, then um, you, you know, you can, you can do the U.S. or you can even leave that blank if you really feel like that limits you and you don't want your geographical location. We tend to think that it can only help you to have a geogra geographical location to sort of target your visitors, um, especially if you're located in, as if you target a specific city or state. Um, another tip on the site name is that sometimes for our, especially our association clients that have uh, uh, abbreviations for their name, like for instance, I see that the guys from WIDA are on the training and uh, I, I, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I'm glad that you can make it. <laughs> so for if your organization is WIDA, well, you might, what we recommend is in your site name, spelling out the, that abbreviation and making it Washington International Trade Association and then maybe WIDA in parentheses, just so that you get all of those keywords in there because you get that, you know, Washington is your geography and trade association and those great rich um, you know, real words where the search engines may not know what your certain abbreviation is, but they, they recognize the, the words when it's spelled out. So for your site name, I recommend spelling out your, um, your organization and then maybe putting the abbreviation kind of in parentheses. Or you can do it the other way around. You could do WIDA and put Washington International Trade Association in parentheses, whatever you're you know, more comfortable with. So now let's talk about what Tendency does automatically in the back end. So there are a couple of things here. Uh, Sitemap.xml is an XML file that is um, we submit. You can submit the sitemap to the search engines, and the search engines will sort of keep an eye on that, and they know that that's where that's the list of all of your content on the site. And so Tendency will automatically up. It doesn't. It generates a sitemap.xml, and it keeps it up to date. So for instance, if you add new content, it will add that content to the sitemap automatically. So here's kind of what that looks like. Here's the tendency one, um, tendency.com slash, it's just your domain slash sitemap.xml. And you'll see things like if we added new photos, the photos will get, so these is, this is the most recent content. A lot of times the content that we add to the site is photos. So you'll see the photos at the top. Um, and then you can kind of scroll down and see all of the other, um, all of the other pages on the site, sort of on that sitemap. I, I do believe it cuts off because the search engines will only index so far. I think it's like a couple of hundred pages. So it does the most, um, it does pages and then the most updated content on your sitemap. So if you want to look at it, go to slash sitemap, your URL slash sitemap.xml and see what that looks like. Um, the second thing is robots.txt. And this is very similar. It's a text file that tells the search engines 
what they should crawl on your site. And Tendency has a, it creates a robot set text file for you automatically. You also have the ability to update it yourself if you like to. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here are a couple of examples. The one on the left is the, what we would call the normal tendency robots.txt. Um, so what this says is user agent wildcard. So for all the user, for all of the search engines looking at this, um, that crawl delay of two is just to give them a little bit of a delay so they don't try to crawl your site too fast because we've run into issues where you know, especially with new sites, if a search engine was crawling a site, that it would slow down the response time for people because the search engines were hitting it so much. So that's why that crawl delay of two is on there. And then all it says, the only thing it disallows is slash admin. So that's all the tendency backend stuff. It says to the search engines, like, don't even try to crawl that stuff because it's, you know, it's password protected. You're not going to be able to get in. It's just going to confuse you. Like, just stay away from the admin. So that's kind of what your normal tendency uh, robot set text file should look like. Um, here's one that's got a little bit of different stuff. This is tendency.com. These disallows, we've got some extra disallows. These are, so if a search engine is following the rules, if it's following the robot set text file the way it's supposed to, it shouldn't crawl any of these pages. Um, if you, if it already has crawled any of these pages, then that's you know, it might go back and call them again. Or if you link to any of these pages within your website, it might find them that way. But it should, if it's, again, sort of following the rules, it shouldn't crawl these pages. So these pages were actually landing pages that we created from a direct mail campaign. And so we sent something out about responsive websites. And we said, you know, go to tendency.com slash responsive to learn more about this. And we don't want, we didn't want search engines crawling that page because we want we want to know that everybody who goes there got there from that direct mail campaign and it didn't like end up in search results somehow. So we disallow our landing pages here just so that we know for sure when we're looking at traffic, we know that, uh, you know, the people that got there came there from our campaign. So that's why you'll sometimes see things like that. We also added where the sitemap is. Um, that's So you may see some other things there on the robots.txt file. So I think I put in here. Okay. So the way that the... The setting we have that controls that is under sites and global site settings. Again, they're in alphabetical order, so scroll down to S. There's a setting called search engine visibility, and you can set it to, so while you're in development, you're, this will be set to private, and that tells the search engines not to crawl anything. So if it's set to private, if you see something like, you know, user agent all disallow with just a slash, that means that it's disallowing everything. That means it's telling the search engines don't crawl anything on my site, which you obviously don't want. If you're in development, you probably do because your URL is something like lexco.tendency.me, which is not your, you know, it's not live yet. You're not ready. So if you're in development, that's cool. If you're live and you see that, let us know. We can, uh, we can fix it for you. Um, you shouldn't see that, but if you do, it's an easy fix that we can, we can update for you. So if it's set to private, you'll see the disallow all. Public should look like our normal normal tendency, and then custom lets you customize it in your theme editor. So, um, and I'll just show you really quickly. This may be a little more. This is a little bit back end. Um, but if I go to Quick Links Theme Editor, let's see if this one's got it. See, this one doesn't even have the robots.txt file here. But if, if you like, we can pull down. Let's see. I think Shipple's got it. If I go to Quick Links, Theme Editor, doo, doo, doo. here it is. So the robots.txt file is pulled down into my theme editor. So I can go in and just update it from here. So if, you know, if I decided, oh, we're not really using these, these um, landing pages anymore, I don't really need to worry about uh, disallowing them anymore, I can, I can remove them. You'll see Shipple's also got some stuff like we had a certain user agent. Each user agent is a search engine that has an ID. It had an ID. Uh, this particular user agent was hitting our site a lot and causing timeouts. And so we disallowed that one altogether. So you can do all kinds of things with your robots.txt file. This is where it lives. That's how you update it. Um, the, the next thing as far as sort of back end things that Tendency does for you is it, we have a redirects module. And the redirects module, you can, here's a help file right here on how to use it. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. You just add, and when any traffic that hits this page to now go to my new page. So for instance, if you have a page that is old or doesn't exist anymore and you have people who are keep trying, you know, maybe it's indexed in search engines or people keep trying to hit it, um, you can actually get 
the search engines prefer you to, they don't like to see those 404s. They don't want to index your content and people click on it and it's, and the, the URL is broken. So if you change your URL or something like that, you want to make sure you get all that. If it's linked somewhere else, you're still getting that traffic. You're still getting that sort of clout for that link. You can set up a redirect. So this is helpful, especially if you're going from an old system to a new system where maybe the place where the contact form is, the URL is a little different or the place where the you know staff pages are, the URL is a little different. You can add redirects from the old URL to the new. And it's pretty easy to use. You literally just go add and do from and to. You can send things to different domains. So for instance, um, this our support request form moved. So it used to be at tendency.com slash uh, or I guess it's shipple.com slash support request form. And we're now moving, if somebody hits that page, we want them to go to HTTP colon slash slash supports.shipple.com, which is technically a different domain. So you can move people if, you know, if the content got moved to a different domain, you can redirect them there as well. So if you have any questions, again, type them in the chat box. Um, we're getting sort of into the more about customizing your SEO and what you can control. So again, if you have questions, type them in the chat box. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep moving. So these are the updates that you have control over. Meta, categories, alt tags on images, and the URL slug. And we're going to go through each of these, and I'll kind of show you how to, how to update them. The first is meta. So we mentioned that by default, Tendency is going to create a title, a description, and, a key, and keywords for each page. You can also overwrite these and edit the meta yourself. And I'll show you an example of that. We'll go over to our, make sure I'm on my demo site. Let's go to our, our friendly about page. So if I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I'm logged in the same place where you see all the edit buttons and things like that. If I hover over options, I can click edit meta. And you'll see this is what Tendency has done by default. So the name of the site, the geography, little pipe, and then it's going to add the name of the site at the end. It doesn't show that to me here, but I, I know it's going to. Um, so just be aware of that. So here is where I can change my title. You know, uh, and maybe instead of about us, I want it to say about Tendency because that's a better keyword. You know, Tendency open source CMS for nonprofits. So that's a little bit of a better title. Um, the keywords, again, I can I can update those. I'm going to say I'm going to truncate these. I don't need all these keywords. I want to keep it, you know, I want to keep it pretty short. My description, use this page to add this. Yeah, I don't want this lorem ipsum here. I only need tend tendency demo site once. You know, you can kind of make whatever changes you want to here. This canonical URL, if you, uh, that is, it tells the search engines exactly what the URL is. So for instance, this page, if there are different redirects to it or things like that, you can tell the search engines, like, this is what the, the primary sort of, this is the URL that they should be indexing this page at. If I hit save changes. Okay, so now it says I've successfully updated the meta. If I hover over this guy right here, let's see if it does it. There you go. It says about tendency open source CMS for nonprofits. It's got my new title. See how it stuck the name of the site? It's still it still stuck the name of the site on the end. So if your um, if your site is doing that and it's starting to look weird, it's sort of a trick you can use is hit space pipe space and save it. And then when it sticks the name of the site on the end, if it, you know, some, sometimes it doesn't look weird, but it's like for this, it, it kind of gets a little cluttered. So I like to put the little pipe on the end. So it gets the name of the site also. Um, and then if I view the page source, I can see my description got updated, my keywords got updated, all that got updated. Um, a note, if you do update your meta, if you once you, so tendency is going to create the metadata by default. Once you start making changes to it, it's it's no longer going to do that. So just sort of a caveat, if you edit the meta, if for instance, if you update just the title, it's going to say, oh, you updated the title. So that must mean that you want to update all of the metadata. So if I go to view the page source, then it will, um, it's going to, oh, it didn't. Okay. That's okay. That's new. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay. So if you update just one thing, as long as you leave the field completely blank, it will still add that. Um, it will still add that default. That's great. That used to not be the case. So I think that's a lot more intuitive. So um, just be aware that if you, if you want to go back and revert back to the default, you just, all you have to do is delete the data in here and then it will go back and revert you to that, um, to that default. So there you go. That's different. Um, let's see. So here is how to update the meta. Here are just some, some metadata tips for your title. You want to keep it to 64 characters. 
uh, try to try to focus on one to three keywords per page within any single page. You kind of want each page to focus on one thing. Um, within the title, you want to keep it to 64 characters. We saw in my example earlier how my big long title got cut off um, in the search engine results. So that's a good kind of rule of thumb. I like to put the brand name last because it's sort of why the name of the site is stuck at the end. Because if you're going to use your brand name, if they're on your site, chances are they, you know, they know who you are. Also, your brand name is your your tendency is a funny word. Chipple's a funny word. People aren't going to search for that unless they know who we are. So your brand name is a little less important. It's a little less is a lot less competitive than some of the other keywords you're using. So use your more comp competitive keywords at the beginning because you get it's it's going to be harder to uh, to rank for those. So you want to weight those a little higher. Every title tag within your site should be different and relate to the content on that page. So um, don't fall into the habit of creating the same title. Try to keep, make your title titles at least a little bit different for each page. Description, 120 characters. Try to include your geography if you can. Um, keywords, keep it to around three targeted phrases. Most search engines ignore this, but it doesn't really hurt. So uh, I recommend filling, filling it out anyway. Um, so let's talk about on-page edits. When I say on-page edits, I mean these are things within the within the content of your site that you can do to tell the search engines what is more important on this page. The first thing we're going to look at is alt tags on images. And I'll show you how to do this. Let's find a page with an image. We may not actually have a page with an image, so we may have to enter one. So we'll let it load. Okay. So I mentioned that by default, when I add an image to a page, let's do, yeah, let's do this, this uh, screenshot. So I inserted my image, I hit done. This is a picture of Carl the guinea pig. We love, we love Carl. So when I, now when I, you'll see when I click on that image, my little image icon got depressed or it got, uh, you know, it looks like it's clicked on. So when I click on him, it says title text and alt text, and you'll see it use the name of my image, which in this case is not particularly helpful. So I'm going to name this Carl the guinea pig. And you can put spaces, you can put whatever in this, and then you hit update image and done. And then now it's updated. If you're not sure if it updated, you can click on it again and you'll see, or you can see if I hover, when I hovered over that, it, it showed me the alt text. So now when I hit save, and when I hover, I see the name of the image. So that's how you change the alt text on an image. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty easy. I recommend, you know, things like tell, put what it actually is. You don't want to, you don't want to keyword stuff here and put too much. But if, you know, whatever information you can put that's helpful, that's applicable, that that's always good. Let's see. So the next thing is the heading formats. By default, the title page of the title of your page is going to be coded in the back end as a heading one. And that tells the search engine, this is the number one most important thing that this page is about. This is the heading. Um, in if you have a subheading, you can code it as a heading two or a heading three. We sort of think of it like an outline. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here's my about page. So if I highlight this guy and I click inspect element, you'll see doo -doo 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 -doo, it's got this little H1 tag around it. So again, that tells the search engines, this is a heading one. This is the most important page, thing on the page. Um, you do only, you want to have one and only one heading one on your whole, on your page. So you don't want to code anything else as an H1 because you've sort of already said to the search, you know, to, to search engines about us, that's the heading one, you know, you don't need any more. Um, to add a subheading or heading two, we'll go in here. We'll say heading two. And then all you got to do is highlight it. And then under formatting here, you just choose heading two. And then we can do heading three. It's super simple. Highlight heading three. And then in the back in the back end, it will show the search engines. This is a heading two. This is a heading three, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the good thing about that is both for the search engines and also on all, if you do it that way uh, on the front end, on the, uh, from a style sheet perspective, all of your heading ones look exactly the same. All of your heading twos look exactly the same. All of your H3s look exactly the same. So then if for whatever reason you decide, oh, what if we made the H3s you know, purple instead of orange, we can do that in one place in the style sheet and they still all stay consistent. So there are two reasons to use those heading formatting tags, one for SEO, 
and one for formatting consistency. And um, there's also a help file. This is a pretty new help file that I created recently on pre-formatted styles. And it explains what each of these pre-formatted styles are. And if you, if you want to change things like fonts, um, we don't really recommend it. We like to keep things consistent, but if you wanna kind of learn how to do that, that's in that help file. Um, here is just a tip. Search engines love rich media. Rich media is extremely, I think that's actually the next, yeah, we'll do this. Uh, rich media is extremely powerful. Um, if you're adding things like photos and videos, um, you are, it's more content that the search engines can index. And I'm sure that you've noticed, for instance, if I type in, let's type in guinea pig. In the search engines, you'll see images come up sometimes. This one doesn't have one, but often you'll see in this image search, you'll see these come up as well. And so if you add images, if you add videos, it's just sort of another place that your content is likely to come up. Like um, this one's got the Wikipedia page, but if we did like, let's see if we can make images come up. Oh, no. Oh, well. To, a lot of times you'll see images and videos, and I'm sure you've all seen that, um, see the images and videos pop up. So if you if you add that content, then you're it's sort of another place that not just in the text, but also in the in the image section, in the video section, you can you can see your content there as well. So just some tips for when you're adding those. You want to make sure you fill out all of the fields, particularly if you're adding things like videos in tendency. Let's go to the videos module. And this applies also if you're adding things like YouTube videos, you you know, this is all the same. You wanna to try to fill out all of the fields that it gives you because at the end of the day, the search engines, all they see is this, you know, this file. And so you wanna give your title something descriptive, use tags, fill out your description, you know, fill all of those fields out to tell the search engines what that content is about. You've got really similar fields within YouTube. So when you add it to YouTube, fill out that content. When you add it to your website, fill out that content. Um, here is, there is a blog post on the SEM blog at the SEMblog.com slash YouTube that has some specific tips about if you're adding videos to YouTube, how to optimize them. Even things like on YouTube, you can add closed captioning for what, what are the words that people are saying within your video. So you can, we've got some tips for adding that as well. Another tip for photos, um, if you're editing a lot of photos is to edit your photos in a set. And the way that you do that is we'll go, we'll go on over to the photo albums module. And let's see, let's pick one with, here's one that has four. So when you're looking at photos in a set, you can go in and edit each of these individual, we use guinea pigs a lot as an example, <laughs> um, or I can click edit photos and I can use this bulk editing, this, this, uh, tool to, if I t start to type, and you'll see it change over here, if I type guinea pig photos, you'll see it's going to update all of these titles. So what I tend to do when I'm adding photos in the tendency photos module is I will start here, I'll replace all the titles and all of the captions, photos, example set, just to give me a, a place to start. And then I'll go in and update, you know, add Oh, let's see if I spell guinea pig right, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, at the beach. And then I'll go in and sort of update, you know, each one and give it something that's a little bit different. So, cause again, you know, we want our titles to be different for every page and that includes photos, which can be, it can, it can be a lot of work if you're uploading 50 photos to go in and change every single one. So this is a good way. So I'll sort of start and say like, you know, I'll start with a, a basic base and then I'll go change at least the titles for all of them. This is the guinea pig of, of Tabby, who's one of our AEs, Carl right here, and we've used him in a couple of tendency ads. So it's, it's part of the reason why we use him sort of all over the site. So now each one has its own title and that unique title is what determines the title, uh, the title tag up here. So here are some resources for uh, for SEO and tendency. This help file right here, getting started with Google Analytics, is specifically about Google Analytics and tendency. So if you are using, um, if you're if you're not playing with Google Analytics yet, it is wonderful. It's a free tool. We set up Google Analytics for 
uh, all of our sites that we that we um, that go live. So you should have an account. If you don't have access, shoot me an email after this, and I can work on you know getting you access to your Google Analytics. This is about a 45 minute. Um, video that talks specifically about Google Analytics with your tendency site. So that's a great resource if you're looking for more SEO and tendency things. We also have some tools that are specific to um, Shipple that we've created, including the Keyword Density Analyzer. And I will show you how to use that. The URL, this is the, the, the link on the, on the presentation is actually the link on how to use it. But the link itself is shipple.com slash SEM hyphen tools. And this is it's created by Shipple. It's totally free. It's totally public. You don't have to have a tendency site to use it. But just to give you an idea, you enter in your URL. So we'll use Shipple.com and you hit analyze. And what that's going to do is it's going to scan all of the content on your site, all of the, the text, and it's going to come up with which words you're using the most. So once you go through all of this and you think, OK, I've, I've optimized my pages for these certain keywords, you can kind of double check yourself this way and say, OK, this is my home page. I'm going to uh, let's see what I've actually what the search engines will actually see that I've optimized it for. So it shows you single word phrases, two word phrases and three word phrases, which ones are being used the most. I tend to ignore the single word phrases because honestly, it's really it, those, those single word phrases are so competitive. And if somebody just searched for the word web or marketing, they're probably going to get like when I searched for guinea pig and I got just the, you know, the Wikipedia definition of that word, it's not really helpful. In the real world, the average Google search is three to five words long. So people are smart. They know that they need to type in multiple words to get specifically what they want. So I sort of don't worry too much about those single words. And I'll look at these two and three word phrases. So you'll see like, web marketing company, search engine marketing, social media consulting, custom web design, those kinds of things. You want to see like, oh, those are the keywords that I meant to optimize my site for. So you can do this for any page, not just the home page. You know, you can type in, um, you know, actually that's not our about pages slash company. You can look at any page and kind of see what what keywords are showing up the most. What's the, you know, the we call this keyword density because which keywords are the most dense in the site? What are the search engines going to think that my content is about? Um, speaking of the home page, the way that you update the meta for the home page is a little bit different than all of the other pages um, because the other pages, like we saw, it's simple enough. We can just scroll down to the bottom and we can go to edit meta. But for the home page, you probably you don't have a link like that. You know, you don't that's not really how you update the home page. So the way you'll update your home page if you want to update your meta there is you go to quick links theme editor. And for those of you who aren't used to working in the theme editor, don't be afraid. It saves versions of everything you do. So you can, you know, you can revert back if you make a mistake. You want to go to your home page. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll should see something that looks like. Let's see where it is. There's all kinds of stuff in our. Actually, this one may not have it because we don't. Oh, let's look at shipple.com. We didn't customize. This is a demo site that's we're not we're not really too worried about we actually don't want it to get optimized in the search engine so let's see if they're here okay so it should look something like this so you're so i went to theme editor it's going to kick me out on the home page double check make sure you're on the home page you'll see block title this is your title tag you'll see description this is your description tag you'll see keywords this is your keyword tag so just make sure that you're editing only the text you're staying out of these you know anything that has the little the brackets, you want to stay away from that. But you can edit your title, description, keywords in here. You just hit save to save changes. Again, it saves version. So if you screw up, it won't, you know, it will, um, you can you can go back and revert to your old, your old version. It's also, yeah. So you just want to keep sure, you want to make sure that you've got the, the keep all the, the bracketed things in place. And if you just update the text, then you're, you're safe. So that's how you update your homepage. Meta, the homepage, again, is a little bit different than the other pages because it's not just an easy CMS page. It's sort of a, it's more, it's more complex. Um, let's see. So that is, oh, the last link I have here is we have some SEO help files for Tendency. So if you go to Tendency.com and you go over to Resources and go to Help Files, these are generally organized by module, but we do have a category for search engine marketing tips and tools. And there are, I'm logged in, so you'll see some, you'll see some more than you'll actually see, but all the ones that are green that are marked public right here, those are public ones. Some of these are internal things that we use. Um, 
you can see there's some lots of great SEO help files from ontenancy.com as well. So we are at about 45 minutes. I mentioned this is kind of a short training. Um, I am going to open the floor up for questions. If you have any questions, type them in the chat box. Um, if I'll stick around for a little while, if you don't have any questions, you can feel free to drop off and um, we'll be, again, we'll be recording this. So I will post the recording and I'll send that link out to you guys as well. So uh, thanks for joining us.